make sure that way we can make sure how the technical details are worked out. So I'm not sure how it'll work because I'm doing Facebook Live and I'm using the streaming software. Well, the camera's on, that's good, but that's from the streaming software. So we'll see how well it does. Anyway, uh, good to have everybody here. Good to be here. Uh, mm -hmm. Good. Uh, with Cassandra and we'd have a full house. Uh, um, and I know she's on her way. She just had to stop in and feed a dog. But um, good Thanksgiving. Hope y'all had a good Thanksgiving. Hope uh, everybody got to eat till they busted. Um, and and you know, um, but the best part is is not just only being thankful, but having your family around you. You know, I, Amen. I, 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 if you if you uh, know of someone, you know. They, they don't have anybody invite them to come over. Um, I remember the year we invited Delphi after James had died, and that was, she loved it, you know, and, and, and I was glad to do it. Um, I didn't think she'd come, but she did. And so you never know. You never know if somebody had come over, and, and you might be a blessing to them. So, mm -hmm. um, need to... Um, Continue to pray for uh, Jamie and Debbie. Continue to pray for uh, Debbie Paris, uh, Nancy Sanford, uh, brothers and sisters around the world. Unspoken request. Yes, ma'am. Um, pray that everything goes good with me whenever I go to my first day on my job. Yeah, work. that's always that's always a, a, a nervous time, and you think. Uh, they're just going to throw me out, but no, they want people to work, and I know you'll, if, if, if you'll, if you'll work as unto the Lord, that's what you're supposed to do. And, you know, even on our jobs, we're supposed to work like we're working for the Lord, so yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> if you'll do that, um, you, you'll do well. So, um, anybody else? Lord, we thank, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everyone that's here. Lord, I, I, I pray for each need that was lifted up, the unspoken request, our brothers and sisters around the world, those that are sick, those that are in need. Lord, and, and, and you know, those that, those that may see this on uh, live stream or whatever and and Lord, we pray for them. We pray for uh, we pray for each one that that comes across this. Not that they'll think that I'm so great, but Lord, that they'll think you're great. Yes. That 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 you'll be lifted up. That they'll see <clears throat> you see the light, because that's what we're talking about this morning: light and darkness. And Lord, just give me the words to say. Help it to uh, go out and not return void. Lord, help it to uh, reach somebody that's in their lowest and darkest times so that they uh, have hope and, and can know you and the power of your salvation. And thank you, Lord, for this ministry. Thank you, Lord, for everyone this year. And bless them now. Bless Avery on her uh, job tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In the children's church, are you, it? Are you doing children's church today? Okay. So we'll do that. Um, I see. Uh, I see. I got me a new cup, a Papa cup. The best job I've ever had was being a Papa. That's just that's, that's that's you know I've had a lot of good jobs. Uh, being a husband, that's wonderful. To Laura, uh, being a daddy. All six, being a granddaddy, um, being a surrogate daddy, um, and all that. So, and, and being a, a, a pastor, uh, getting to take the word, a teacher, whatever, all those are good jobs, and I've been blessed. You know, God will use you. 
um, if you'll give it all to him, if you'll follow his spirit. Um, anyway, the the this one came to me. It's it's kind of hard to when you're looking at the the time between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Christmas messages are easier because that you you know what happens. Everybody knows what happened, but you can look at the details and. Every time you look, you see something new. But you've got a you've got a framework. You've got an outline. Thanksgiving, you know, and everything. Give thanks. Well, uh, there's there, there's a lot of ways you can mold that. But it's like the Thanksgiving meal. You 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 prepare it. You cook it, and it's 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 a lot the same every year. You know, you go messing up the macaroni and <laughs> cheese. People get mad. But what are you doing? The little intermittent time as you're as you're preparing for Christmas and you're preparing for uh, the, and, and, you know, in, 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 in more formal churches, they do, uh, they do uh, talk about the Advent season and, the, and looking at the coming. You know, there's a lot, there's some value in that and preparing your heart and looking at the different aspects. But, and, and the Lord gave me this one um, in preparation for Advent. Well, what are you preparing for? What are you looking at? And, it, and, and this is called the darkness. The darkness. Uh, and, 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 you know, I was thinking about it. I heard that uh, Simon and Garfunkel song, Sound of Silence. Hello, darkness, my old friend. You know, that's actually a very dark song. You know, no God and all that. Um, good harmonies now. Don't get me wrong. A lot of people have covered it. But, um, this, but this morning I wanted to speak about darkness and the spiritual darkness and wickedness of this world. And see, there was darkness in the world before Christ entered. And, and you know, you think about, well, well, what was going on? And it talks, of, the Bible talks about Jesus being the light coming in the darkness. And, and the, and the, and the, and it hit me this week, you know, that all creation was groaning in darkness, groaning, waiting for the Savior to come. Men walking in darkness, loving it because it hides. They're seeing, you know, you, you shine a light on, on a, you can look at a room uh, and say, oh, it looks good, it looks clean, but you get... Uh, and shine a light on stuff, especially you get a UV light and go through, <coughs> and you see all kinds of things that you didn't see and probably didn't want to see. Um, but the light shows the dirt. The light shows the uh, what's what's been covered up. John chapter one. If you want to turn there, um, John, the disciple who Jesus loved, John. Uh, the one who wrote his gospel to show that Jesus is God. Um, and in fact, here, when he says in the beginning, he is even pointing back to the beginning of, uh, of Genesis where it says in the beginning. And we'll go there in a little bit. But John chapter 1, verse 1, and this is one uh, that I... Um, I memorized, or this verse, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Word, uh, Jesus himself. Uh, Jesus, uh, it, it, it carries with it, the, the root word there is logos, uh, but it carries with it that he spoke into creation, like when he spoke uh, creation uh, in the beginning. But in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jehovah's Witnesses change that in their Bible, by the way, because they don't believe that, that Jesus is, is God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. John wants you to know this for sure. He makes it plain. He says it Six ways to Sunday. And then he's, that he was the creator. And then he's the giver of life. In verse 4, in him was life. And, and the life was the light of men. So here this, you have this idea of light. 
And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It's, he didn't understand what does this light mean. And, and John's talking, of course, about when Jesus came to this earth. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This was John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He, he was pointing, he says, here is the Lamb of God. Here is the Messiah. Here is the Christ. Here is the one that God said would come, that all those prophets, prophets in the Old Testament said would come. Verse 8 said, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, talking about Jesus now. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And what I'm talking about, here's the light coming into darkness, and they don't want to know him. And then we'll explain more. We'll get more into that in a bit. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, and that glory carries with it light. We, we saw his light full of grace and truth. Wow. And, and, and break that down. We, we, we'll say those words and, and, and gloss over them. But his light is full of grace. Meaning we got God's mercy without deserving it. Something that we didn't deserve. His forgiveness and truth. We got the truth. So it wasn't by chance that John chose those words in the beginning because he wanted to paint the picture. He wanted it known that here you have the creator entering, entering his creation. It's kind of like an undercover boss going into the business he built, but he, he is going into the world that he made because he loved us, because he wanted to, because the light, because there was darkness, and the light, and the light was needed and wanted and, and 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 anticipated. But see, it wasn't by chance that John chose those words in the beginning. Genesis one: In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and what was upon the face of the deep? Darkness. Darkness was there. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So you've got, the, you've got darkness, you've got the Spirit moving, and God said, let there be light. There's the word right there, let there be light. And there was light. Before, before the Spirit moved, there was no light. Before there was the word, Jesus, there is no light. But when God says it, let there be light, there's light. Then God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. There's a lot in there. He divided the light from the darkness. There is a difference. There should be a separation. And God called the light day and the darkness night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. See, and, and, and so I wanted to bring these things in because this time of year is the anticipation of the coming Messiah. Uh, 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 the, you know, we think about the babe in the manger and all that. We think about the redemption that he would bring. And the Bible says, like I said earlier, even the earth and all creation long for him in his redemption. Romans chapter 8, starting with verse 18. Paul says, for I reckon, that's a good southern word, I reckon. But that, uh, that really means that I have waited out 
I have judged. I have thought about it. And, and, and you know, when you, when you do a dead reckoning, you measure, it at, measure out the depth. And he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation, here it is, verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Creation was not only waiting for Jesus to come, but he was waiting for us. See, we lost our place in the fall. We lost our place when we sinned. We lost our dominion when we sinned. And all creation was waiting for Jesus to come so that we could be the sons of God. Remember John said, hey, he came into this world so that we could be the sons and daughters of God. All creation was waiting for us. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who is subjected to the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. We're redeemed. We're freed. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Good word, travail. That literally means labor. Like labor pains. All creation, the contractions were coming. It was time. Because the Bible says when the fullness of time was come, Jesus came. It was the right time. And so all creation groaned and travailed waiting for this birth. This birth of the Savior. And not only they, but ourselves also, which are the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption. To wit, the redemption of our body. We're, we're, you know, we were, we're saved from the penalty of sin. When, when you're saved, when you've been born again, you, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are saved from the penalty of sin. You don't have to go to hell. As you grow and the Spirit lives in you, you're saved from the power of sin. You know, the, 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 the more you grow in Him, the easier it is to overcome. But one of these days, when he comes back, we get to be saved from the presence of sin for the full redemption. But see, the only thing is, we were waiting, the world was waiting, uh, but the world was in darkness. And they loved the darkness. I was, I was thinking about that song, I Love the Night Life. I want to boogie. <laughs> But the world was in darkness and they loved it. One verse that everybody memorizes and knows, John 3, 16. Um, they hold it up at football games. You see them up in the stands up there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But let's read on. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So Jesus didn't come to, to point out sins. He didn't come to say, oh, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. That's pretty good. I want to be, I want to be that way. I want to point to Jesus. I don't want to be one that says, oh, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. But he came that the world through him might be saved. But here, verse 18. And this is Jesus' words. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. This is the key verse. This is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. In other words, I'm not going to step out of this darkness because you might see what I'm doing. 
and, and I want to keep it in the dark and cover it up. I don't want... I don't want my deeds to be brought out before a holy God. I don't want them to be brought out and seen. I want to stay in the darkness. You know, and it's a natural fleshly desire to want to be in the darkness and, 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 and do some of those things. Because if you come to the light, you look and see, oh, that doesn't fit. You know, when I first, when I first uh, got saved, <clears throat> There were a lot of things in my life that I, I, I did by habit and, and all that. And, you know, one by one, it wasn't that, oh, somebody told me that was wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. One by one, it's because the Spirit was living in me. And, 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 and certain things, oh, Lord, I'm doing this in front of you. I'm looking at this in front of you. And, and I, I don't want to do that. And so he says, well, I'll help you out. I'll take that desire from you. I'll take that want to from you. Drink it. Take that out of the way. My mouth, take that out of the way. Um, a lot of other stuff that was taken out of the way. But see, people love the darkness. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Lord, shine that light on me so that I see what needs to be taken out. Why would people love darkness? Because it hides their actions. It hides their sin. You know, in fact, there's, there's almost a thrill about it, I guess you'd say. Um... You, you, you talk to people who uh, cheat on their spouses and they'll tell you part of the draw is the excitement of, of, of not getting caught or possibly getting caught. The gamble. Because there's, there seems in the darkness there seems to be no accountability. There's no judgment. But the devil, this world, and the flesh. You say, well, I, I don't mess with that. I don't do that. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, be a part of that. I'm over here, there, over there, live and let live, live and let die, whatever. But the devil in this world and the flesh are not satisfied with being in darkness. They want their own light, their own wisdom that calls their sin good. And anything that contrasts that Anything that shows it, you get, you get the, the true light. You know, we, I, there was a video um, I saw. It's, it's really, really good. Uh, you know, the, when the Bible talks about heaven and the foundation of heaven and, and the different stones that make up the, the foundation of heaven, the, the sardonyx, the emerald, the different ones. Diamonds aren't in there. Rubies aren't in there. Emeralds are in there. Um, but all of them, you know, you look at them in regular light and they look pretty. But if you get pure light, that's this double polarized, that's what it is. Polarization. <clears throat> I remember my physics teacher trying to explain that because white light is waves like that. And so that's like polarized sunglasses, the, the, the good sunglasses, not just the, the smoking ones, but the the, the real polarized, is, you, it's got lines in it. What it does is when that wave goes through, it chops the top and the bottom and you get more concentrated. Uh, you, you, it filters some of the light. Um, and then if you get double polarized, you get the pure light going through as the way it was explained. And, and so when you look at these particular jewels that were listed in... Uh, in, in the book of Revelation is the foundation of, of New Jerusalem. All of those that are listed will reflect beautiful colors. But the ones that the world thinks are great, the diamonds, those just look black in that pure light. Mm -hmm. he, see, God knew when he designed this city 
that it would reflect the pure light that came from his glory and light up the city which would have no need of the sun. Because the Bible says there will be no need of the sun because the Lamb will be the light of that city. But see, the, the, the devil's not satisfied with, oh, you have yours over here. They want their own that, 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 that calls their sin good. And they don't want anything that contrasts that. They'll say, your very existence. I can't tolerate that uh, when, you know, when you speak his word, when uh, uh, even preaching like this. Oh, you can't do that. One of these days it may be uh, censored or whatever, um, putting it on YouTube, they, they're, they're developing their algorithms, algorithms, sorry, that can listen to words. I guess my accent may mess with it. It messes with Alexa. She can't understand it, so maybe they can't understand it. But your very existence and proclamation is, is being a Christian. They look at that as evil. You know, they'll tell you, oh, oh well, I, you shouldn't be able to tell your children about that until they're 18. That's what they want. So, because the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he won't depart with it. You wait till they're older, that, you know, it's the, the probability of them coming to Christ is very slim. But see, darkness is never content to stay on its own side. It must quash the light in order that truth not be brought to shine too much on what they're doing. Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. See, that's, that's, that's the, the thing. They call evil good. They call darkness light. But God loves his creation so much that he sent Jesus, his only begotten son, to die in our stead, to pay our penalty, to bring truth and light into darkness. Isaiah 42, 6 and 7 says, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. So that's, our, that, that's what we're supposed to be. I've called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for, the, for a light of the Gentiles. Here's a prophecy from Isaiah hundreds of years before Jesus came. He's saying, look, I, I've called you. I've called all people to righteousness. That's, what, that's my plan for you. But I'm not just going to leave you on your own. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going, to, I'm going to keep you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to have a covenant, an agreement with you. And you're going to be light. You're going to be light to other people, to the Gentiles, not just to the Jews. And you're going to be light, at verse 7, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and then that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Wow. That's God's plan. That, that was realized when Jesus came. But not only that, it was realized when he brought us to light. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what he did. Open the blind eyes. Bring the prisoners out from prison. Bring uh, those that sit in darkness out of the prison house. But that's what we're supposed to do too. And I love that. Not only does he promise to save us, but to keep us, to hold our hand. And this light wasn't just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. Now, a lot of people get, uh, uh, when, when you say Gentile, and I've heard this all my life, well, that, that's just kind of not Jewish, Gentile. But when they said Gentile, and you'll see in the New Testament where they say the Greeks, the Greeks were Gentiles. But not only that, they were the reigning, I guess you'd say the reigning 
power, civilization, intellectual thought, philosophy of the world. But they were outside the covenant. Another word that we we might use is heathen or pagan. Outside. That's literally what those mean. Outside. They were strangers. But see, God intended for them to come in as well. And so he said, I'm going to make a new covenant. I'm going to make a covenant that the light is going to come in the darkness and bring them in. To open their eyes. See, he came for the whole world. For God so loved the world. Everybody. He came to bring the power to save. And to even transform people. That's through the Holy Spirit. You get saved. The Holy Spirit comes to live in you. He's the one that transforms you. He's the one that changes you. Timothy was, um, I guess you'd say, Paul mentored him because uh, he took he he went and stayed uh, with Lydia, his mom, and 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 Timothy was there, and a uh, young man, uh, and Paul kind of took him under his wing and took him out on the, on on missions with him, took him out preaching to people. Timothy saw all these things. And so there's a lot in here when he talks to him. He talks to him as his own son, his surrogate son, his spiritual son. 1 Timothy 1, 8. And he's talking about the law here. Talking about the law of God, uh, the, the commandments and all that. <clears throat> and he says in 1 Timothy, starting in verse 8, 1 Timothy 1, starting in verse 8, he says, but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for, see, remember, God called us to righteousness. The law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane. That also means outside. For murderers and of fathers and murderers of mothers for manslayers. Oh, he's going into the to the 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 big sins, the, the thou shalt not kill. Um, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Thou shalt not steal. He's going through all these here. Uh, murders, father murderers, mother murderers, uh, manslayers, whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. For men, he's going into, into kidnapping and all kinds of uh, perverted stuff. For liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound God's, uh, doctrine according to... So he's saying the law was made to point those things out. You know, you don't know if it, you broke the law unless you know the law. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. So he's saying, look, look at me, I'm in the ministry. I broke those laws. Because he says in verse 13, he says, who was before a blasphemer? I taught, I'm sure that Paul, when he was Saul of Tarsus and he was going out uh, arresting these Christians, standing by and holding the coats of them who stoned Stephen, I'm sure he talked some smack about Jesus. I mean, I'm sure that he had some choice words to say about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hmm. And I wonder what he thought about that after he knew who he was. But here he says, he was a, I was a blasphemer. I was a, and a persecutor and injurious. I was, I, man, I was, I was awful. But, there's one of these, these buts in the Bible. But I 
obtain mercy? Because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying. I'm going to tell you the truth right here. This is what he's saying. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ came into the world to save sinners. He came to be the light in the darkness. And here's uh, the, the one little phrase that I love where he's opening up to Timothy. He says, of whom I am chief. I am the biggest sinner of them all. I've done some things in my past uh, that are awful. And people know it. Everybody knew um, the, 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 Paul's history. Some of them had relatives uh, and, and kinspeople that had been put to death because of him. Yet Jesus, he says, Jesus saved me, even me. How be it for this cause? I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering as patience for a pattern of them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. He saved me who was so awful so that other people could see and say, you know what, if he saved Paul, he can save me. If he saved uh, that that fellow who used to be a drug addict or a hell's angel or, or, or a, a drug dealer or a pimp or a prostitute or a drunk, he saved them. He can, he can save me. Mm. Think about what happened to Paul, Acts chapter 9. I'm not going to read all that. But he was, he was Saul of Tarsus. He was persecuting the Christians. He was going out and arresting them. He was walking in darkness. And he literally saw the light. He met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Why was he going to Damascus? To arrest more Christians. He had letters. He had warrants in his coat that gave him the authority to arrest and, and Jesus himself spoke to him. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you going against something you can't change? I'm Lord. I'm God. And I have a purpose for you. And how did Saul leave that encounter with Jesus? Remember that? He couldn't see, right? He was blind. And, 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 and so the men had to, that were with, that were travel with him, had to lead him away. And, you know, he, 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 he saw Jesus. He met Jesus. And, and Paul said that he was saved by grace through faith in Jesus. But I'm going I'm I'm to show you something here. We, we think about salvation as, oh, uh, everybody bow their heads and close their eyes. And I'm going to say, is there anybody here that needs to be saved? Raise your hand. And, you, you know, you, you stay there. I'm raising it. Well, if you raise your hand, then I want you to pray with me. And if you, and if you just said that prayer, I want you to be, uh, you, now you're saved. And, 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 and it's a very emotional thing. And I'm not putting that down because there might be somebody who says, you know what, that was the moment I committed my life. Mine was, but see, the thing is, I'd, I'd, I'd had God working on me for a while. And I had gone to church for three weeks dealing with this stuff, thinking about this stuff. And and, um, and he spoke, and, and I went down to the altar. But but Paul spent three days. He didn't, he, it wasn't like, oh, I'm, I'm coming right away, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing this out of emotion. He thought about it. It says he was in darkness and blindness. What did he do during that time? He fasted. Acts 9 9 says, and he was three days without sight, did neither at, uh, eat 
nor drink. He was fasting. Fasting is, 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 a very, is a way to focus and concentrate on spiritual things. Now Paul knew that as a good Jew. He, he, he would have practiced that. And he did that. And he was looking at all that he had gone through. He was listening to that. The, he, he was thinking about the voice that spoke to him. He was thinking back through scriptures and all that. He was fasting. And not only that. He was praying because uh, when when uh, God uh, called on this uh, certain disciple, Ananias, verse 10, uh, well, I'll read this little part here. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I'm here, Lord. The Lord said to him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight and inquire in the house of Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but another one, for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed. He spent, Paul spent three days fasting in darkness and praying. And he had seen a vision. God gave him a vision. A man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his son. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Ananias was a little bit scared. Because it, he, was, he, was, he was going after uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter and he was the bounty. He was the one that he was hunting. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. I've called him to bear my name before the Gentiles. Wow. I've called Paul to fulfill what I said way back in Isaiah 42. That I'm going to be, make a light to the Gentiles. But I, he's going to bear my name before the Gentiles. And kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now, let me get back because I kind of lost, I went too fast through it. Paul was that three days fasting and praying. In other words, he was thinking about everything. He was thinking about what it means to follow Jesus. What it would mean uh, uh, it, it, you know, he was he was laying it out of his mind. He wanted to know the whys. He wanted to know the wherefores. He wanted to know, hey, I've been taught all my life these scriptures and these different things. How does it fit in? In other words, he counted the cost. He looked at being a disciple, and he went through all that, and he said, yes. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. Yes, he did get up from the grave. Yes, he did ascend into heaven. Yes, uh, he is the Christ. All these things he decided. He, he came to full knowledge. And, and see, what I wanted to get at with, with that is, you know what, we're not called to, to call people to an emotional Say a prayer. We're called to make disciples. A disciple is a follower. That's committing your whole life. That's committing everything. And so Paul was thinking about all these things. And Ananias, verse 17, said, went his way, entered into the house, and just like Paul had seen in the vision, he put his hands on him. Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's another sermon altogether. 
the laying on of hands, the filling with the Holy Ghost. But that's what he came to do because that way Paul would receive his sight. He'd see the light. He, he would be the light. He'd receive the light. And the Holy Ghost, which, which Jesus had promised as the gift to give power to be witnesses to all, to everybody, to the whole world. He says, Paul, you're going to get that. So he laid hands on them, and immediately, verse 18, there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. When he'd received meat, he was strengthened. Um, and, 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 you know, he actually did eat. He got the protein. He got the meat. But you think about that as a new Christian. You've got the Holy Ghost. You start getting the Word. You get the meat of the Word. And you get strengthened. It edifies you. And he was certain days with the disciples which were there, which were at Damascus. The very ones he was coming to arrest. He probably pulled out them letters, them warrants, and said, hey, is there, is there a John here? Well, look here. Here's, your, here's the warrant where I was coming to arrest you. Bet you never thought about that, huh? And straightway, after he got done with them for several days, straightway he, he says he, he, he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. How did he preach in the synagogue? Well, he had an in. He was one of them. He was a Pharisee. He went back to him and said, started saying, guys, look, y'all been wrong about this. Jesus is the Son of God. Y'all were wanting to crucify him for saying that, but he is the Son of God. How do I know? I saw him. I, and he goes through, I was in darkness, now I'm in light. I see the light. Just like in the beginning, there was darkness. There was a spirit, and there was Jesus. Let there be light. There was light. See, see, seeing Jesus, seeing the light, hearing the truth, like I said, didn't immediately produce a salvation, but, but he did. But it did. See, <coughs> that light that, that he saw was going to turn upside down everything that he understood that he had learned at the feet of the Rabbi Gamaliel. Um, and, and it came because he saw the light. He recognized the wrongness of our darkness. That happens with us. We see the light. We see Jesus. We recognize the wrongness of our own darkness, our iniquity. Through the drawing of the Holy Spirit, the preaching of the Word, we repent. We confess our sins. Come unto the Father receive grace and mercy and here then that promise God holds your hand the new covenant was mentioned he gives us the Holy Spirit that's in fact that's part of the new covenant he says look I'll pour out my spirit upon you I'll give you my spirit I will be with you I will abide with you I'll be present with you the Holy Spirit the comforter the one that Jesus said, we just got through reading it um, in, 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 in John last Wednesday night. He says he will lead you in all truth. In other words, he will, the Holy Spirit will lead us to a closer walk with Jesus. He'll transform us from uh, he'll transform us from the inside. He'll use the word, the washing of the word to scrub us. Uh, to scrub out all the dirtiness and darkness inside. Because see that we got we got places in us that we want to hide away. But if we'll let him, he'll go into those rooms, shine the light, and say, Oh, it's dirty in here. Let me take a let me take some washing of the word and get that out. You ever clean your house or clean something up and you and you bring it out in the light and or turn on the fluorescent light of space and say, Oh, I missed a spot. That's the way it is. He, he, he'll clean you up. But he says the, uh, he cleans us, he scrubs out the dirtiness and the darkness that's inside us. 
that we were born with. That's our iniquity. We were born in iniquity. Iniquity, I use that word a lot, the Bible uses that word a lot, is inherent. It's built in. It's born uh, that way. The love of darkness, of all manner of sin, rebellion, selfishness, and covetousness. I, I, I use that analogy one time that we're all balls of flesh. We want what we want. Um, and we'll do anything to try and fulfill and satisfy our desires. Of course, it doesn't satisfy. Until Jesus came into the world and came into our lives. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 10, and 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, or adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. We, we, we know that, but, verse 11, and such were some of you. Wow. Just like Paul says, hey, I was I was among the worst. You know, this this was some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified. That means you're saved just like you've never seen. By the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Look at where some of y'all came from. That's what Paul said. You were hot headed, you were oh uh, partiers, not the good way. You were drug addicts. You were drunks. You were promiscuous. You, you know, uh, even even the the feminine men acting like women, stealing from people, cheating on your wife and husband, and extorting people, <laughs> murderers, liars, kidnappers. But you were saved, justified, made clean, given the Holy Spirit. No longer under condemnation. No longer under judgment. Remember back in John 3 where he says that the, the condemnation, I didn't come to bring the condemnation. You do it yourself because you won't come to the light. But now that you've come to the light, there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. In Ephesians 5, he, 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 Paul talks about this same thing. Be ye therefore followers of God. I mean, Ephesians 5, starting in verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smell and savor. But fornication, all uncleanness, or covetousness. Covetous, covetousness covers a lot of stuff. What does that mean? It means I want what I want. I'm going to go get it. Let it not be once named among you as become a saint. Wow. Now we're in the light. Don't go back in the dark to get stuff. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. There, that was where God took care of my cussing. My dirty talk. Neither filthiness nor foolishness nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. You say, oh, it doesn't matter what I say. Yeah, it does, because it affects you. For this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. You know, the, the, the more uh, the church is in the world, the more you'll see the church become like the world. The more that they'll, they'll try to justify darkness over light. Mm -hmm. And those are vain words. And, and Paul says, let no man deceive you with vain words. Because of these things, because of all the things that he just named. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness. You were this was you guys. 
You were in the darkness. You loved the darkness just like anybody else. You reveled in it. But now are ye light in the Lord. Not just ye have the light of the Lord, but ye are light. In other words, people are watching you. You may not realize it, and you're out in this world, and you're a child of the king, you're supposed to be the light just like Jesus was the light. Wow, amen or oh me. Because when I point one and child three are pointing back at me. But now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. How am I walking? Am I walking in darkness? Are people seeing darkness? Are people seeing me just like everybody else? Are they seeing something that's different than seeing light? I'm going to get all excited here and knock my coffee off. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit, you've got the Holy Spirit living in you. He's supposed to be fueling that light and taking the darkness out of the way. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Wow, the, the, the Holy Spirit is going to change me so that I can be used by Him and so that, that I am light, so that when people see me, they see Jesus. That's what I want. Or do I want to be halfway? Do I want to be half-hearted? I don't want to be half-hearted. I want it to be Jesus. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That doesn't mean you go around judging people. It doesn't mean you go around telling them where they fall short. But what it does mean, what reproves darkness, light. In other words, you be the light, all the light that you're supposed to be. You shine for Jesus. There's a difference in your words. There's a difference how you act. There's a difference how you work. There's a difference how you do. You don't have to say a word sometimes. You just be that. And it will reprove the darkness. But it won't reprove it in a way of condemnation. It will reprove it in a way where the people say, Hey, I want to know what's going on in your life. I want to know why you got joy. I want to know why you got a smile on your face. I want to know how come uh, uh, you, you got a wife that's happy. How come you got children that are happy and doing right and all that. I want to know. I want to know. And, and that doesn't mean that if you got children, that, because you don't have all control over that. You, and you, you don't always have control. All you can do is be what you can be. But you do that. You prove what is acceptable unto the Lord, they'll see. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. You can't have fellowship with something that, that, that you've been freed from. For it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. And here's a little warning for edification, rather admonition, if you will, for, for you as, who are Christians. If, if, if the flesh or anything else is calling you to do something in secret that you wouldn't, I used to say that you wouldn't do before your granny, that you wouldn't say before your granny. That's, the, in my mind, that's in secret. Mm -hmm. If you find yourself being called to do that, then you ought to say, oh, this is darkness. This is what I used to do. This is what I've been called from. I want the Lord to be able to scrub me and, and, and make me light. I want to be light. But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then 
that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. We ought to look about us and we ought to look and see what we're doing. We ought to see Christianity is not just, oh, I, I'm just going to walk blindly through this life and I know I'm saved and all that. You think about it. You, you, you watch. You watch what you do. You watch what you say. You look at the things that the devil comes against you with and you walk circumspectly. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. This world we live in. See, just like Jesus came to this world to be the light in this world, he also calls us to be light. In fact, he saved you to be that light. His light to others. That's his plan. He didn't, you know, he could have uh, come in here and, and, and made a huge show and made everybody stand at attention and watch, but that wasn't his plan. His plan was to save, he saved 12. And those 12 went out and told other people. And those people went out and told other people. And it turned the world upside down. Jesus said in, in, in Matthew 5, in verse 14 through 16, he says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all those that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And that's what I want to leave you with. Lord, let my light shine. I want that light. I want to be contrasted with the darkness. And see, and that's what I wanted to bring this morning. See, we, 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 you know, in the coming month, we'll talk a lot about Christmas. We'll talk a lot about the coming of the Messiah, the babe in the manger. But I wanted you to see before, you know, and, and I, I do a sermon, prepare your heart. That's looking inside. But now I just want you to see this week is the state that the world was in before he came, the darkness. The state that we were in before he came in darkness. But also, I want you to see him being the light and us being the light. Ask him to help you to walk in his light so that you can be light in a dark world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this message. Lord, I, it was hard to get out, but I pray that the words will stick with us. Help us to walk in the light. Help us to uh, not walk in darkness. Lord, help us to shine your light to others. Not to, not to be condemning to them, but just, just to, to glorify you, to point to you. And Lord, I pray that if there is somebody that's listening to this and the Holy Spirit is dealing with them, that they will pray that they will think about it, that they will say, Lord, I want to come to you. And that's, that's repenting, confessing to the Lord. Saying, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm in darkness, but I see that you're the light. And I want to come to that light. I want to be light. I want to be a child of God. I want my sins to be forgiven. My name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to have eternal life and be freed from the bondage that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray if anybody is praying that prayer even now that they'll get in touch with us. That we can give them just like, like Ananias and the disciples gave Paul, that we can give them some meat to strengthen them, the meat of the Word of God, to strengthen them and help them to walk and be used by you. To help them to walk in the Spirit, Lord. And Lord, I pray for everyone in here that, that you'll just help them to walk in the light, circumspectly, closer to you. And Lord, we pray for uh, the, the, the coming weeks as we look forward to uh, celebrating your birth. 
celebrate you, celebrate you coming into this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. And God bless you. Y'all got a brand new sermon today.